some background on this entire issue. We're joined this morning by market analyst at Rand Swiss, that's Viv Governor. Before we chat to him, though, let's take a listen to what the CEO of MassMart, that's Grant Patterson, told us yesterday. Edcon's financial problems have been widely reported and, and we've been having troubles for several years. Uh, we're actually quite close to completing a transaction involving various stakeholders, landlords, other investors. Um, and unfortunately, a document um, as part of that transaction was obviously leaked to the Sunday Times, therefore giving them uh, uh, the incorrect perception of what was going on. We're actually, I'm actually feeling quite good this weekend because I think we've got a deal and I think we'll be able to recapitalize it, it can get rid of all the debt and run for several years, giving us time to fix the business properly. Well, Viv Governor here this morning to take us back to where all of this started. Viv, good morning and thanks, thanks for your time this morning. Now, it's no surprise. We've known for a couple of years that Edcon hasn't been doing so well. Mm -hmm. um, just take us back to where all of this started and how we knew that they were in trouble. Well, I mean, because uh, I think this all started or kind of like the narrative is that, you know, it was it were delisted. A private equity company came in, took them off the exchange and then uh, basically put a lot of debt on their books. And so it made it more difficult for them to you know, to operate. So even with the operating with a small profit, they were you not know, profitable and so on. They had a huge debt burden that they had to carry around and that is service. And uh, this is like the private equity play. You come in, you basically buy a company on debt and then you basically supposed to run the company so well that you can actually pay off that debt and make a profit after everything's done. And, done. and uh, the analogy I'd put through would be the Sears situation in the US, mm -hmm. where something similar happened where, you know, hedge fund kind of like, you know, uh, a Wall Street kind of guys got in, uh, in play with the, uh, a retail company, thought they were smarter than everyone else in the room, and, uh, you know, messed it up basically. Yeah. Okay, so just a correction before we carry on there. Uh, Grant Patterson was CEO of Edcon yeah. and not MassMart, yeah. so that's a, a mistake we made there a little earlier. So, so what are we saying here, Viv, is that they got themselves into a bit of trouble yeah. um, when it comes to, to debt, like yeah. we say. There was a rescue plan, and now the rescue plan hasn't worked. Is yeah. that what we're reading into this? Yeah, look, I mean, there have been a number of rescue plans, a number of, like, kind of, you know, this is... It's, 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 it's a weird thing this, because it, at the same time that it's happening to, S, like to, say, to Edcon, it happens to other companies out there as well and other retail companies. Like I said, Sears. Sears, I mean, I think it was 1989 or 87, somewhere really recently was the number one retail in the U.S. Mm. And now they're basically out of business. You know, I think a similar situation is happening with Edcon. So you can, can't just say it's just a case of, you know, bad strategy, which is probably is a part of it. But it's also a case of the environment changing as well in terms of what's available out there in the marketplace, not just the online space, but also the, 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 you know, the bricks and mortar retail space as so well. So how, how does one get oneself into a position like that in the first place? How does it happen for somebody who should be good at business, for a company that's been around for that long? <laughs> well, the problem is, like I said, it's, it's a case of, like, you know, Firstly, the idea was, you know, when, when they were dealers about 10 years or so ago, uh, that these guys, these, these, these smart guys from, from Bain would have come in and, uh, and actually rejigged the system in such a way that they could basically make the company much more profitable and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, sell it on, pay off their debt and, you know, make it a much more, you know, a very profitable enterprise for them. Um, the mistakes made, uh, there, there were numerous mistakes, but I think, look, it, it, they haven't moved at the times. Okay, um, I can't just say it's just a case of the environment out there because there's other retailers that have done reasonable, mm. look at Mr. Price mm. and so on. Uh, Edgar's to a certain extent is you know old and it's, it's, it yes, hasn't really moved. Around around, yeah, time. it has moved around. Uh, at the same time, there is you know other examples of similar companies like es like uh, Edcon, other places in other places of the world as well, which have also experienced this difficulty. So I have to say it's a combination of the two. So he says uh, we we heard from uh, Grant Patterson just now, the the CEO of Edcon, uh, saying that they do have a plan. Uh, mm. they, they, they're going to be announcing it soon to save all of this. Do you believe that? You, you're confident that it's going to be, Look, it's going to be good enough? Just before we came on air, I was just telling you this is like a case of wartime reporting in World War II or something. You know, yeah. as, a, as a patriotic South African, you've got to support the company oh, yeah. because the number of jobs. So many South Africans also depend uh, on them, customers I mean, and employees. Yeah, but yeah. in the employee numbers, I mean, you, just to give you perspective, I mean, according to uh, Stats SA, we have about 9.7, 9.8 million jobs, formal sector jobs, outside the agricultural sector in South Africa. 140,000 jobs is like one and a half percent of all mm. the jobs in South Africa. Mm. You know, that's a huge amount of mm. like, you know, of, 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 of low back. If you can't save this, if you, if you can't just like this, this like I think has been reported, it would be the largest job loss, the 40,000 plus the 100,000 in history in South mm. Africa. 
uh, it would make a huge impact in the country. It would boost, like I said, our unemployment rate up by a couple of percent probably. Uh, it, it really is impactful. And of course, we hope we can make a success out of this. That being said, uh, you know, the kind of stuff that we hear about, uh, you know, 41% uh, discount on rental and get 5% of the business from his land, yeah. you know, it's landlords, uh, it sounds or smacks of desperation. Uh, and I think it has to be desperate, but it doesn't ex exactly inspire confidence out there. And the issue, of course, as well, is that Edcon is not just a retailer in terms of clothing. There's other businesses they yes. have as well that basically won't work as well if people don't believe they're going to be around in a year's time. Well, he says they're close to announcing a recapitalization deal. Mm -hmm. Ideally, what would that be? What could that be? Okay. Uh, I mean, it, uh, hope, hopefully the, the best thing for the business, if someone comes out, uh, basically doesn't get debt, to finance their recapitalizations, comes in and says, okay, we'll pay off your debt. You don't have this massive interest burden that you're going to be paying off every uh, as well. And then we will give you enough time to actually restructure the business, start to finish. Someone comes in, probably new management. I mean, the current management uh, is well intentioned as it may be. Haven't done a good mm -hmm. job, as you can see from mm -hmm. where the situation is right now. Comes in and says, basically, okay, what part of the business is working? What can we do to make this part successful? What part of the business is not working? And what can we do to basically get rid of that? And have the time to do that because right now with the, with the interest burden that you have where you have to basically be you know, servicing things and so on you can't really have the time to actually say okay I'm gonna have a bad quarter or a bad year while I make things better for the future so at the end of the day however wh wherever you look at this or however you look at it we are going to see somebody losing their job even if it means saving the company how, well, how, how do you see it I, I think most certainly I think you, anyone that recapitalizes this and doesn't cut uh, some kind of uh, you know doesn't make a, some kind of cut to the to the payroll uh, would, would be very surprising. I mean, it would be almost charitable, and I don't think there's much charity in the world at the moment. So mm -hmm. anyone who comes in would be coming in would basically saying, we'll save you, but you're going to have some serious surgery involved here, and that would probably f you know, filter down through the jobs. Maybe not the direct jobs, because that's going to be difficult in South Africa, but the indirect jobs are definitely going to be affected, things like, for instance, the supplies and so yeah. on. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much for that. We wait and see what the big announcement will be. When will it be, Viv Governor, just uh, breaking it down for us, the situation at EDCON at the moment.